Hi students, today we are going to be um, working on lesson 5-3, which is um, using models to and properties to divide with two digit divisors. So here is our learning goal, you can say it with me. I can use models to help find quotients and you'll need your workbook and a pencil. So pause right here and go get it if you need it. And then we are on page 189. Okay, so you guys have a grid. You need your workbook out and open. You have a grid on your workbook that you'll be able to work through. Um, and here is our solve and share problem. A parking lot has 270 parking spaces. Each row has 18 parking spaces. How many rows um, are in this parking lot? Solve this problem any way you choose. So go ahead and pause the video here and you will go ahead and try to solve through this and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, well, we need to divide our number um, and you can use that grid or we can just work through our division steps. So what I'm gonna introduce to you is our does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? And obviously, yes, McDonald's sells cheeseburgers. But our D stands for division. Our M stands for multiplication. Our S stands for subtraction. Our C stands for check. And our burgers is bring down. So if we have 270 parking spaces and I need to split it up by how many um, parking spaces are in each row to figure out how many rows are left. So we've got our divisor in the box, divot, oh, no, 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 dividends in the box, sorry. So dividend and it's in the box, at the end of our problem in here, our divisor is on the outside and quotient is up top. Now what's different about this is when we write it just horizontally, we have our dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. Okay, so now I need to start with um, dividing in my divisor into my dividend. So we just go row by row. So does 18 divide into two? If you say no, that means a zero goes there because it doesn't fit. Does 18 go into 27? So yes, it will go in. Now we need to figure out how many times. So if I have 18 and 18 and 18, and you can really just do the math off to the side. Don't try to guess. I think in multiplication, we were trying to guess sometimes and then we got the wrong answer. So eight and eight is 16, 36. So is that too big? Yes, it is. So we just have one time that it goes in there. 18, now we're on to multiplication. 18 times one up here is 18. And then I'm on to sell or subtract. Seven, take away eight. Can I do that? Mm -mm. I need to borrow. My two becomes a one. Now that's 17, take away eight. And we're going to get nine. One, take away one is zero. So now I check. Is nine less than my divisor of 18? If the number you get when you subtract is larger than your number out here, you have done something incorrect. You might have subtracted wrong you might have not put it in enough times, divided it in enough times back on step one. So yes, it's smaller, so now I'm gonna bring down my next number, which is a zero. Now I need to decide 18 into 90. Well, I know 18 and 18 is 36, so I'm gonna to have to keep going. Um, and so I can use a little bit of estimating and rounding here to get a jumping point, like a starting point. So if this is about 20, 18 is close to 20, how many times would 20 fit into 90? Well, 20, 40, 60, 80, so about four times. Um, so I can try 18, oh, I already know it's gonna be too low, times four to see, but we rounded down, so we might be a little under. So four times eight is 32, four times one is four, plus three more, five, six, seven, we have 72, well that's a lot lower. So then let's try 18 times five. And we've got a number that's ending with a zero here. So that might be a sign um, that it's going to be a times five number. 
So eight times five is 40, five times one is five, plus four more is nine, and yep, we've got that 90 there. So 18 gave us a starting point that we were only one off when we used that estimation and we had to go up a little. So 18 goes, divides into 90, so we're starting back over. Divide in, 18 into 90, five times, remember we put that up with our quotient, 18 times five for our multiply is 90. We already did that work. Sell, subtract, check. Is zero less than 18? Yep, then we're good to go. So it has 15 rows. Our quotient is our answer in the parking lot. Okay, let's talk through our visual learning bridge. Here we go. Um, so th they're gonna show a different way to model this. Um, I think sometimes it can be a little bit trickier to break down when we do it this way, but it's just another way that you can solve through. Emily has a rectangular garden with an area of 360 square feet. The length of her garden measures 20 feet. How many feet wide is her garden? So they are giving us this middle number and they give us one out here. And so when we have area equals length times width, they're giving us the 360 equals um, the length is 20 times our W is still a variable because we don't know that. So what you're really going to do here is your 360 divided by 20 to get that W. So let's see, get that W, that win, right? No. What they do. So here's how they break it down. Um, so they have their 20 and their 10 equals 200 and 20 times 20 equals 400. So W is going to be between 10 and 20. So if they had 20 times 10, they'd have 300. 20 times 20 would be 400. So they know their answer is going to be between 10, maybe I'll do, and 20. Okay, so they know part of it is going to be 10 with the partial product. They don't know right here. So then they're doing their 10 times 20 is 200. So that's out of that 360. So then they have 160 left and they have to decide 20 times what is going to be um, 160. And so if you look over here, they have 20 times eight is 160. So 10, so they put their eight right here. And when they add it together, they get that 18. And then they can multiply to check it where they go 18 times 20 and they get that 360. Um, again, this is just another way where you can break it down with partial products if you need to, but um, if it isn't working so well for you and you want to just use that standard algorithm, that's okay too. Okay, so we are going to try to work through the diagram for one and then standard method for one over on this page. So we are finding 156 divided by 12. So on one side, wait a minute, oh, here it is. On this side, we're going to have our 12 on the outside of it. And then we have, um, if I'm gonna use the reasoning here, if I did 12 times 10, I'd have 120. And if I did 12 times 20, I'd have 240, so that's too big. So I know part of my number will have a 10 in it. So then 12 times 10, well, 120 is gonna go in here. So now for my final, oh wait, oh, 156, there we go. So from my um, dividend, I need to take my 156 and take out that 120 and we get 36. So we have 36 here. So 12 times what is 36? Well, 12, 24, 36. So three right there. So then if I add that together, 10 plus three, we get an answer of 13. And the book says I'm right, so we're good. However, I think this can be kind of confusing, working backwards a little bit. I am, I understand it, but my brain is working more with that standard algorithm, so I'm gonna model another one of those. So for number three, remember we're doing our does McDonald's sell cheese burgers. Divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. So we've got 682 
divided by 22. We've got our dividend under our little bracket bar, our divisors on the outside, it's dividing into it, and we're ready. So 22 does not go into six, so I put a zero there. I'm trying to, I'm on my step one, divide, or does. 22 into 68. So then that's where I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work to see how many times 22 would go into 68. Well, I know 22 and 22, if I add that together, would be 44. If I add another 22 to that, four plus two is six, four plus two is six, 66. So this is one, two, three. So it's going to go in three times. 22 times three, we already know, is 66. And now, I so I multiplied, now I'm on subtract. Eight take away six is two, six minus six is zero. Now I'm gonna bring down my two. Now, oh wait, I forgot to check. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Do, 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 do. Reverse. Check, is two less than 22? So before you bring down, is two less than 22? Yes, I put it in enough time, I'm ready to move on. So now my two is gonna come down. 22 goes into 22, well I know, just one time, so that goes up in my quotient. So I divided it in to this step. Now I multiply 22 times one is 22. And I'm on subtract and it zeroes out. So my answer for number three is 31. Okay, go ahead and give number four a try and we will talk about how to solve through it in group. If you want to draw out um, the little, we've got like a big square, a little square, put your 11 over here. And then if you think, well, 11 times 10 is 110. So part of this is gonna be your 10, 11 times 10, you've got your 110. So if you wanna finish working through it that way, you have to take your 143 minus 110, you can, or you can try to work through it with the standard algorithm. That's the way my brain is making sense of it a little bit better. Okay, give it a try and we'll see you in the group.